<laughs> so I come from this uh, Annie Oakley background, you know, of we can do it, you know, we can do this thing. And so performance has always been there. Strong women. I had an aunt who, as she and her husband aged, he could do no right, you know. He was like the yes dear guy. He cooked dinner and uh, she still found fault with it. He cleaned the house. She still found fault with it. He couldn't drive. He was not allowed to drive the car. He had to, she had to drive because she, he could not drive to meet her satisfaction. So um, I made a decision. <laughs> Some of you are laughing. I don't know if that's you or you know people like that, but that's the background I came from. And I was this empowered woman and I was going to do all these great things when I was in school. And I accomplished these great accomplishments, but whenever I didn't accomplish things, I felt discouraged. I felt down on myself. I felt like a, a failure. And so I was either at a great high or I was at a tremendous low. And when you're on that high, you can get prideful and you can judge others and look down on others. When you're in that deep, deep low, you feel like such a failure. You, you don't even want to live anymore. And I got to that place. There, there was a time where everything fell apart my senior year of school and I achieved and tried so hard. I'd had a nervous breakdown practically in my junior year. In my senior year of school, I tried so hard, and I felt like I'd accomplished all these things, and they meant nothing to me. You hear it, you see it in the news every day, right? People that have accomplished great things, status, they have money, or they've, uh, became, they've become famous. Look at your Marilyn Monroe, your Elvis Presley, your, all these people that you'd say they had the whole world. They had everything, and yet they end up medicating themselves to death. Something was missing. They achieved more than most people ever achieve in their lifetime. You know, this whole group, maybe by the world standard, you know, we could say they've accomplished so much more than any of us as far as being fame and fortune and uh, that kind of accomplishment. And yet, it failed to satisfy them. Still empty. Well, I went through that. And I think a lot of us have. My husband, being a laid-back person, both, both of us firstborn. How many firstborns in here? Firstborns tend to be that personality of perfection because we get the most of our parents, right? They, they're like, uh, they want to do everything perfect. So they're under this perfection thing too, right? This first child they've had, and they want to do everything perfect, uh, make sure that everything's scheduled and everything's this and that, and they read all these books, and they're trying to carry it all out. And by the time you do like we did and have four or five children, by that point, you're like, oh, that's okay, relax. See, they'll walk at some point. They'll talk. They'll be fine. You know, but with firstborns, we're like, what does the animal say? What does the cow say? Moo. And we're comparing to everybody, you know, in our class. And, you know, I had my baby at this time, and it's already, she's already speaking, and she's already doing this. And we go to these little mom's groups, or we go to the Sunday school class, and we drop off our child and go, look what my child did this week, right? Perfectionist, am I talking to you? And, uh, that's my personality more, what I, what I had adopted my belief system. Now, my husband, on the other hand, he was firstborn, but he was a guy, and he had a lot of pressure in his home, and he felt like he couldn't achieve, so he just chose not to try. That's the other manifestation of a perfectionist, of a performance, uh, the performance trap. I try so hard, and I can't make it. So, you know what? Rather than try it all, I'll just bow down. Anybody know that? Typically, a husband and wife, a lot of times, they'll, one of the others will be this high-performance person, and the other will be the laid-back. You know what? I don't really feel like I could try that. I think I'll just bow out. And you get a girl that's a achiever married to the guy that doesn't believe he can do anything. Now, God does that. In his beauty, he does that because he wants to help this, this, uh, this man rise to his potential. So the wife, though, she's got to be careful how she goes about it because if she starts, you know, lording over him and correcting him and criticizing him and telling him what to do, then he's going to get discouraged and he's going to feel like, I can never measure up to her. I just won't even try. And then she goes, how come you don't talk to me anymore? How come you don't try anymore? Why, what's wrong with you? And she doesn't understand why he doesn't want to tell her his dreams anymore, why he doesn't want to talk to her anymore because she's so criticized everything that he's done or tried to do, that now he doesn't even feel like he can. That's how Gary and I were when we got married. I was the performance girl, and he was just, he'd be laying on the couch, I shared with you in the last session, and if I'd walk in, he'd jump to attention. You know, I taught him. Uh, and uh, I began to realize, though, uh, some wiser women, praise the Lord, in the church, shared with me, this isn't going to work long range. 
You might train your man early on, but later on, he's going to be looking to you, and you're going to be the leader instead of him being the leader, and you're going to wish that he could lead. You're going to wish that he didn't fear failure enough to try something. Because if you're constantly criticizing what hypercritical people do is even when you can do this with your children as well. If you're constantly telling them what they're not doing right and how they should do it differently and how they need to do this, legalism produces rebellion. And so, or it causes someone to become shy, to just pull back and try nothing. If I do this, mom's going to grab it out of my hand and she's going to fix it, you know? She's going to, I had one mother tell me, oh, bless my daughter's heart. She can't do anything crafty. And I watched her one time. Anytime her daughter would start to do something creative, the mother would, oh, that's not right. Take it away from her and fix it. Do what she wanted to do. Legalism, hyper-perfectionism, hyper-critical attitudes cause people to be squelched and the creativity can't flow. Well, that's what happens with you and I. When we feel like we're going to fail before we try, we just don't even try anymore. We quit doing what we need to do.